coming up next, if you have a garage and you want to build a system around it, or if you are interested to know how to build a system around the garage, stay tuned because Felix will show us how he used Oracle Apex to do that. Hello everyone, hello Africa. Welcome to this session, first ever Oracle Apex Africa conference. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be part of this. My name is Felix Ongere from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm application developer, system integrator. I work with a company by the name Simba Technologies based in Nairobi, Kenya. This is where Kenya is mapped on the African map. And some quick facts about Kenya. It's a country in East Africa with coastlines on the Indian Ocean. It encompasses savannah, lakelands, the dramatic Great Rift Valley, and mountain highlands. It's also a home to some of the biggest wildlife, wildlife like lions, elephants, buffaloes, and rhinos. Also, Kenya produces some of the best athletes in the world history, like Eliud Kipchoge and the rest. Kenya is a very beautiful country, and you should visit Kenya. In today's session, we're going to talk about the web-based garage management system. This is a system that provides you with the end-to-end -end business processes in how you manage your garage. And some of the features about this system, it has a workshop management here where you manage things like the job cards, technical worksheets, uh, base, the vehicles, work, store management, here where you manage things like the items in your store, contacts management, here where you manage things like your customers, suppliers, employees, etc. Purchasing and stock management, how do you manage your vehicles in your showroom? Is it as a stock or sales, uh, account transactions and GL management. How do you manage your invoices, uh, quotations, credit memos, debit memos, journals, things like that, and also your book of accounts. Reporting system also provides you with an option of where you can be able to pull anything that you want online for, on the system in terms of reports, whether it's a monthly report, daily reports, everything. Why is this garage management system? Is, a, is an end-to-end -end business process. It enables you to track things like from the point where you raise a job card, all the way to billing, all the way to payments, all the way you push that kind of information to general ledger. That's the end-to-end -end business process. Tracking of bills and transactions. How do you track things like uh, over payments, uh, due bills, underpayments, bills, things like that. Daily backups. Also, system allow you to do your backups in terms of how you wish to be, it to be done, either daily backups, weekly backups, monthly backups, so that in 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 a, in a case where the disaster occurs, you always have a backup to run to to restore your business business setups, things like that. Bill not notification automation. How do you communicate to your customers in terms of when you raise our quota to a customer? When a, you have to notify a customer that uh, this bill, kind of bill is, uh, is awaiting payments or is due for, for, for payments, the system will allow you just to push a button and the kind of, that kind of information will be, will be posted to the customer in form of a notification, email notification. Tracking service history is how do you track a particular service of a vehicle? Because this one will also enable you how you could be advising a customer in terms of a particular vehicle because you will be having all the service history for this particular vehicle in in such a case daily monthly and yearly reporting system gives you a capability where you can run any report you want in the system you can either pull the report that you want into the system depending on what nature of the report that you you may be in need of whether it's a quotation reports invoices reports payment reports etc Decrease management uh, cost system allows you to will also reduce enable you to reduce the cost some costs that you you may incur in terms of things like uh, uh, purchasing of uh, the stationaries things like that. Uh, in that regards, let's now proceed to the demo. So this is our login page where we have to put your username and password for the authentication, and also the system will also check for the anonymous logging in. Whether you are a human being or a robot, also the system will authenticate from here by answering that arithmetic down there. So I'll just provide the username that I'm using and the valid password. Then I click 
sign in. Authentication is successful. This is the first page that I'll access. Whereby to the left, I have the daily job card sheets or daily jobs done on a particular day. On the right side, I have the job open jobs in the queue, which means this job have not been uh, completed or somehow not not built. So this is the first thing that I'll see on my home page. Here we have the system menus. We are here we have the, the the workshop menus. We have the customers menus, customer management, contacts or contacts management. Here we have some setup sales uh, quotations, sales orders, sales in invoices, items vouchers, and the rest. Here we have the administration setups. Things like how do we define our organizations in terms of banks, taxes, departments, job designations, payment methods, notification status, garage pay. We define them from here. Also, we have the store management from here. Of purchasing, purchasing inquiries, things like that, quotations, purchase orders, and the rest. Uh, we have the store setups, things like unit of measurement, unit unit of measurements, expenses, items, and that. Store transactions or trans store transfers to also here, and also the stores reports. Here we have the shipments management. How do we track our shipments in terms of client shipments, shipping invoices, shipping expenses, invoices, etc. Here we have our financial model where we have the account receivables, account payables, purchases, cash management in terms of funds, receipt types, vouchers, things like that, general ledgers, general ledger transaction, chart of accounts, cost centers, journal vouchers, statements of accounts, trial balance, post calculations, and the rest, and also the financial reports, and also the financial statements. Here we have the trans uh, account transaction in terms of the quotations. Invoices, credit notes, journals, purchases, and purchase credits. Here we have the systems report in terms of the uh, reports, vehicles reports, or the account transactions reports. For example, if I click the account transactions reports, you'll see this kind of reports listed for you here. Invoices reports, quotation reports, purchase reports, sales reports, credit notes reports, purchase credit notes reports. Journal reports, receipt reports, payment reports, and bank transactions reports. If you click a report like invoices reports, this is what the system will ask you to provide. There's some parameters that you have to provide. You have to enter dates in which you want to see the invoice. For example, in this case, I'll just pick from August 1st to today's date. Then click here. There, either I want invoiced or all invoiced. By what I mean by invoice is all the invoice that are not draft, which means are invoice that were billed and were paid, or were cancelled or avoided. Yeah, so I'll see the list of all my invoices here, depending on the site that I've put here. But if you want for a particular customer, again the system gives you that kind of an option. Either you can download this or view it from the straight from here. So from this particular case, I've seen all the invoices for this customer. And these are the information for this and all this information are there a total amount paid a um, total the invoice amount in due um, net amount a tax subtotal and the payment status of this so here again also we have the menu for the system security where we manage our users we add our system users we update the we unlock the accounts or we can also change their passwords or update their password so here if you click for example there you'll see all the list of all your system users for in this case i'll just pick this since i've logged in with the super user account only super user is able to see all these users or the system admin is able to see all these users so here you'll see all the information for this particular user the username this uh, that all that information their department job designation and the rest and also you can even update the password for this particular user if there's a need be also the password is managed on a self-service here whereby if you drop here you'll see the option here for changing your password. We have to provide the, the new password and the old password. For example, it's different from here. You have to provide the current password, new password, and the confirmed password for a self-service. But for someone locking the account, you won't provide the current password. You just go straight away to the new password and that. Yeah. Again, on the, uh, on the super user account, we have the, this menu here for the setting. It's a short form. You can do from here or direct from here. You'll see the location definition. 
billing information, quick notes, base, you define b base, repair types, uh, statuses, chart of accounts, accounting periods, banks, currencies, tax rate, default settings, integration, import bulk contacts, import bulk vehicles, import bulk parts, sales, inquiry resources. So the quick one, I'm just going to click on the location information. Here where we define our organization. And only super user is able to do this, the one off thing you do once, and the system recall the, the rest. Here you define the organization that name, the addresses, town, region, all this information there, country, fax, telephone number, VAT, service tag number, if at all there is, and also the default currency you use. And also here you define either is a main ledger or a sub ledger. What we mean by this, you can decide to use this as the main ledger. And within the organization, we have some multiple things that we run, like uh, like canteen things like that, car wash. So those are those will be a sub ledger of the main ledger, which is the garage. Yeah, and also the image because this image, the system will print this image when you when you when you when you are calling documents, things like invoices. We have the managed setups. How do you want your documentation to look like? For example, how do you want your invoices to look like? It will start with the INV. Like right now, we have an invoice at a current of 11.55. So the system will increment this. The next invoice will be 11.56. Credit notes prefix, quotation prefix, purchase prefix, purchase credit prefix, sales prefix, job card prefix, uh, receipt prefix, journal prefix. All this information the system will hand once you define them once. So I'll go back here. Cancel this. That's as per the location is concerned. Another key important thing, first of all here, I need to change this to uh, Africa Nairobi for reporting. Here, and I click apply. Once that is done, I'll come back here. I'll go straight away to accounting period. This is a very key area because you have to define your financial period. It runs from January to December, whichever way you want. There's that flexibility here. And anything that is, if you define accounting period, you have to define the particular months that you need transaction to be happening on that particular period, accounting period. This case we are beginning from January 2021 to December 2021. is an active year and is a close, is still open year. It's a financial year 2021. And we are only able to transact within this range here. Whether it's an, an in, a job card, whether it's an invoice, whether it's a quotation, whether it's a purchase orders, whether it's a journal, all those information can only be posted under this particular period that is open. So it gives you a control of the system on how you want your finance to be run or how you budgeted for your financial year. At the end of the day, when you run your books of accounts report, you're able to predict or know how this is how your organization does in a particular year, financial year. So that's one key area. Another key area in the terms of the setup is concerned is on the chart of accounts here. Here we will be defining your accounts like this. For example, I've defined this labor, labor sales. Here we will be all our, uh, our service labors charges will go to. All transaction will be posted here. If it is a, is a, a labor charge, things like that, things like repairs, charges, all those will be posted with this kind of account. Account code is this, account name is this, revenue is a revenue account, is a level of revenue account, is a bank, no, payment, no, report accounts, yes, is a balance sheet, no, not yet defined, is a standard bank, all this information are there. Is active, is it account code, account code, is it, account mode, is it a credit account or a debit account? And here where we define our segment. What makes a, an active or a complete account? I'm going to use uh, number one is a se segment one, which is a scheme, business unit two, account, the actual account is three, activity is four, and then spare is five. All these give me an active, a complete account number, which is this. So also system gives you that options. You define them, once you define them once, you, the system will keep on reusing them. Here we have the banks. Here again we define our banks. Here we have the banks. For example, these local banks here. I'll pick our local uh, bank. 
define the bank there you define the branches here all that information there then also the currencies here you def here where you define your currencies and the the exchange rates if at all you are, you are dealing with multiple currencies different currencies like this one is a kenya shillings this is our local currency i'll be able to define the tag the the exchange rates here if there's a need yeah so the system gives you all those kind of uh, options also the tax here tax rate once you define them once the system re reuse them like this VAT 26 so when you when we will be doing our transaction and you pull a VAT 26 to be uh, to be added to the particular transaction system will use this tax rate here which is 26 automatically and do the do the others for you so those are the basic the basic setups that you need to do in the system also here you can do integration and and also you can do the default settings so i'll be log in with one typical user to see how the menu changes for a particular user which is not a super user now in this case i'll log in with the technician and see only what technician is able to see so this is the, this is the technician menu which is limited limited only to the garage management and also all, not all garage management is able to see here is only able to change the password and log out so i'll go back again and log in with the super user so that we do one transaction and see how the system manages the rest again on the garage management here there is this workshop summary which is only the supervisors are able to see here we are giving you an option for the uh, an analytical uh, summary form in a graphical interpretation in terms of the contact strength the job card strength which is a yearly based year to today's date like october you can see paid jobs and paid jobs total job cards created and down here we have the job card summary in terms of this in september we have a total amount for this for the job card which also a drill down we should click like that system give you this 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 kind of uh, transaction that makes up that that so there's also that available for you and also the system will give you shortcuts here the application shortcut shortcut you go direct to job and that's here we have the job summaries here you'll be able to see the jobs awaiting approval on-site jobs off-site jobs and confirm awaiting completed and job created and also you can add a, a new job card direct from here the same to here here we'll have the all the job card listed here for you whereby you can search or click one straight away and you go to this kind of one a screen yeah so in this case we'll do one one end-to-end -end process and we're able to see how the system does the rest for you so in this case we'll just add a new job card let's say a vehicle comes on board is a single vehicle a single job card not a multiple job cards attached to one uh, multiple vehicle attached to one job so here i'll set the vehicle detail here miles in i'll do the six thousand today's date i'll pick this as the as the to uh, this job card date due date due in is this you just put something like uh it was this advisor this is the person talking to the customer is on site technician i'm assigning to this bay i'm assigning to bay two status it has arrived the vehicle create job card then you click create once you click that the system takes you back here whereby this job card has been created and a notification is sent to the customer the customer this customer will see a notification for this job card that has been raised so I'm, I'm just going to show you a typical example for a job card that is sent to the customer this is a booking notification right now I have issues with my domain I'm just showing you what has been sent before because this is our customer the customer will see, receive an information like this dear Rita Rita this is the information deal with this is the service that is raised So I'll go back here.
this is our job card that we raised today I'll confirm this since I'm the supervisor straight away I'll go straight away to the repair booking pick this the service change oil that when you click here you see the way the system will handle this for you again it gives you this option for printing this technical worksheet which also this if the technician assigned to this job locks the system will be able to see this information so in this case i'll just click the print uh, technical worksheet the system will give you option either to print give give to the technician or attach to the to the job to the vehicle itself or direct to the system so this is a typical uh, worksheet that is printed the system our image is here this is our company information this is the job number that has been raised all this information due in due out this reference is this customer is this vehicle details is this and work to be done is this and down here is this so let's say assume this job has been done and is completed as voice has confirmed let's go straight away to billing where you click this I'm going to go to labor. I'll put anything there. It's going to labor sales account. Quantity is one. I'm going to charge this person. These are three thousand, which is a local uh, amount. I'll put. I'll give a discount of five percent just to show you how the system handles the same, and also the VAT, the tax is five percent. So you see the way the system will handle the arithmetics for you. So now this is how it looks like, and also here you can print also the job card. If at all you want to give the customer to this so this is our job card so like uh, billing address is this this number speak the billing address for the customer customer company job card number is that work is this Charges is this, and this job card is due for billing. These are the amounts, whatever. Everything is here. All these vehicle de details and also some book housekeeping work down here for the client to sign. If at all you are giving the customer, and also this one, the discount was five, VAT was five percent, tax is coming to this. So this, uh, you see now the system handle the, that for you. So in this case, we, we are going to convert this straight away. You can either convert to quotes if at all the customer doesn't want to, to be billed at that point or convert straight away to invoice. So in this case, I'll just click here to convert this to invoice straight away. And this is our invoice. You click this. And this is our invoice information. You click this. And you confirm this because this is a draft invoice coming from account payables and is a draft when you convert if you if you convert this to invoice now the system give you this for notifying the customer you can either notify the customer via email by clicking this button the system will send this kind of an information i'll just give you this as an example the kind of notification the, the customer will receive which is this they are this 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 the invoice due is this amount is this so in this case, you can either uh, go straight away to payment or don't pay. And also payment you can do in the lump sum or a full amount payment. So in this case, I'm just going to click the payment so that we pay in full. This is the amount where you can pay in full or in lump sum. So in this case, I'm going to pick this. All this information are there. Whatever you need to change, then you just click this pay. Once you pay that system is already uh, marked this as paid now it's an invoice now you can come here and look at the payment also down here we have the short shortcuts amount due is zero this and this so again you can also look at the payment details if at all there's need be where the system will mark this invoice is this this amount due is zero this and it's paid either you can reverse the payment or push straight away to general ledger for accounting purposes so in this case we'll go back and close our job Okay, because it has been built, fully built, and fully paid. Shortcut, we have the system of shortcuts here. Quotations, invoices, credit notes, journals, purchase, purchase credit notes, transaction summaries. Here you click this job card. I 
and now we go back here and now close our job card because it's already been built and it's fully paid whereby you click here say yes miles out you can do this then you put now the next service date just give it till january 2022 and click apply once that is done the, our job card now is not in this list but now it's on the completed job so that's our workflow from end to end uh, trans business uh, end to end business process from the uh, raising the job card all the way to the payment Thank you, Felix. It's actually uh, nice. It's an amazing system, man. And uh, I'm wondering, how long really did it take from you to build the system from scratch, like from having nothing until you have the system, the, the one that you showed us, the demo? Hi, Salim. Thanks for that. Uh, actually, uh, the, uh, the coming up with the application was a pretty, pretty hard work. First, uh, let me just say this. I used to gather requirements at night so that I do my development during the day because I was running on a very, very small, short, short time as possible as, as much because I was also doing other things. So it took me around three months to come up with the whole idea to put them to work. I remember it's, it's been a multiple trial here and there till we come up with this kind of a, a, a thing because the system is not just a matter of managing the, the garage itself as it's concerned, the workshop is concerned. I'm trying to integrate all the way to finance bit of it, and finance is a bit a little bit complicated. When we talk about the account receivables, account payables, there's a whole book of of thinking because you have to know how the garage itself works and also the, how the finance itself works. Even if you don't step to the finance class, you have to know how. If someone talks about account receivable, what does it mean? So it it was re literally a bit uh, a hell of work, but uh, we come up with something. Amazing, but but that's that's the idea of Apex is letting you concentrate and focus on solving the business problem and implementing a system that might change your life in three months. I mean, three months is nothing. Great and job. Also, maybe to add, yeah, maybe just to add a little bit about the the technology itself, Apex. If if you look at the the report that we've just pulled, like that job card report and even that uh, technical worksheet, is not actually Apex report. It's an integration between Apex report, Apex itself as a framework with other open source. Because the report that we are consuming there is a, is a Jasper report, is an XML report. So Apex also gives you that kind of a room to expand the, the technology that you might need to use. You run with whatever first possible you can do. That's right. Thank you very much, Helix, for the nice demo.